Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Garrett Severin. I'm the uh, sales manager here uh, at Nordhaven Southeast in Florida, and I'm with uh, Tom Sawyer. Uh, Tom does all of our uh, boat washing and detailing. Um, you know, Tom and I first met probably back in 2004, uh, just before the Atlantic Rally when I lived in Stewart, and uh, you know he came down with us to uh, Palm Beach, and uh, takes care of all of our uh, new Nordhavens that are coming in. And, uh, you know, many of the uh, brokerage boats as well. Correct. So uh, thank you for joining us today. All right. Great. Thanks to be uh, uh, everybody. You want to tell us a little bit about your, your history and how you got into uh, to boat detailing? Okay. Um, my family, uh, I'm from the Bahamas. We've been in uh, the boat and yachting world. I mean, uh, my history is all fishing right. and uh, boating. And my family are actually original settlers of the Bahamas. So oh, they're wow. the loyalists that moved to the Bahamas with, they were ship builders um, and house builders and home builders. And my grandfather was the last one in line that actually built wooden boats with hand tools. So oh, wow. we had the drill that was sort of like the egg beater <laughs> yeah. and the true planer, which, you know, and then the, uh, the caulking was big chunks of tar. And we'd melt that mm -hmm. in to, to waterproof in between the planks. Oh my gosh. That would That'd be pretty neat to see in person. Yeah, he used to uh, sketch out the boats. He'd build up to 120-foot fishing boats, and his drawings were on a chalkboard. Oh. And then they would go out in the woods, and they'd pick uh, mahogany trees and different trees that had shapes for the different parts of the boat that they needed to build. Right. That's pretty so, neat. You don't, you don't hear about that too often. Anymore. No. <laughs> it's a lost art. Yeah. So, um, like I said earlier, you've, you've been, you know, helping us out and taking care of our, uh, Nordhavens here. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, you do a real great job, uh, detailing these boats, you know, when they arrive and you get the shipping wax off and, uh, you know, before they depart, uh, you do another uh, full detail on the boat. Correct. Um, you know, without giving away all your, your secrets, I mean, what, what exactly do you do, um, you know? pre-delivery to the owner to, to really give the boat its, its uh, shine. Okay. All right. Well, the boats come over from the factory and sometimes they have a correction in the gel coat where the guys might have to do a little wet sanding and they'll buff. Right. And the machines tend to scratch or the pads will scratch or swirl areas. And what I'll do is I'll look over the boat, get it cleaned up, polish out all the swirl marks and scratch marks, mm -hmm. and then get the, the topical wax on there right. and seal it up. Yeah. So, so when you look at it in the sun, sometimes if it isn't polished right, you'll see like a squiggly lines and that, you know, it's all over the place, just chaos. And, you know, when I'm done, you don't have that. It's just, you know, the pure reflection. It's that mirror finish. Sure. Right? And that it takes is. a couple stages, like right. for the boats, it's usually about like a five stage process right. to get to that. Yeah, it's a little hard to schedule that here in Florida with all the, the rain and stuff. That this we time have. of year right <laughs> now, yeah, it's the rain and it's, it is pretty hard. The heat, too. Yeah. That heat. affects the, the materials. Oh, it does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so we're, we're here with uh, Tom Sawyer again. And, uh, you know, there's a, a chat window that uh, you can uh, ask questions. Um, we've got a few of our own questions. We're going to go through this presentation first. And,. Uh, you know, we look forward to answering your uh, questions um, as soon as we're done with this presentation. Um, you brought a, a couple products with you, sure. um, you know, and, you know, one question I think that's out there is, is how does the owner of the Nordhaven prolong the shine on their gel coat in between the major polishes? Because, okay. you know, a major polish is a, is a large expense. Sure. And uh, if you can prolong it and get a longer life out of it, I mean, that's it's always uh, a better option. That's a great question. And I try to go over these questions or answers and, you know, problems bef once I'm done detailing. Right. I'll go that. But if you're not with someone like me, a person will just detail and give you the boat and say good luck. Um, it is extensive to get to that point, like I said, five or six steps, mm -hmm. and it is a lot of work. But once it's up, if you can do a few ma minor things to maintain it, you'll prolong the polish job, and also you'll preserve the gel coat. Gel coat is a porous material. Mm -hmm. It's not paint, which I know you know, but for you guys, right. and it will dry out if it doesn't have some kind of wax in there. So it'll end up being, it'll turn to powder, and on a real dry boat, you can run your finger and you'll see white on it, or if you wash it, the water running off will turn milky 
and you know the runoff will be milky. Right. So, and that's when it's totally dried out. Yeah, it's, I've seen some of those boats, and it's uh, a chalky kind of texture on it. It's and just that'll take a few detailing uh, times to bring it back because the wax has to penetrate back into the gel coat, and then that allows it to shine. Mm -hmm. So the most important thing is to keep uh, a coat of wax on the boat. Once you get the boat, uh, a lot of people want to make this big frothy bath and, and get out there with big scrubby brushes and, you know, soap it up. The boat doesn't have, you know, body odor or bacteria or loose skin like we need to wash off when we soap. Right. Usually it's just like a light coat of salt or maybe just a little bit of dust. So a lot of times I'll actually tell my clients to rinse and uh, chamois if they can at least chamois the dew off in the morning because we have a heavy dew here. So basically it's a free boat wash every morning. The boat's soaked. What I have is a, uh, this is a chamois mop. It's a little bit, of, this is the most expensive one, but I would recommend it highly. It's a two inch material. Don't get the little spaghetti strap ones that look like this. That's just basically a waste of time and, and you'll just be, you're not picking up any water. This is a two inch material and it's a two inch double material that is really good. So this will do, will help you clean. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is as you chamois, this will pick up the dirt and salt and then how large your boat is. And then if you're wringing it out and it turns black, you'll have to rinse in between stages of drying the okay. boat off. But if you're not getting a do, I would say at least once a week, or if you're in a clean area, like say in the Caribbean, like Bahamas where there's no pollution, and you didn't have like high winds, there's rarely any salt. I would say at least every two weeks just rinse. And then this pulls off whatever's on the wax because like pollution and salt combined together. Here we have the cane fields, which they burn yeah. and that becomes acidic and then that'll eat the wax. So if you leave that on there and you're not taking it off, it slowly pulls that protective layer of wax off. So in certain areas like... Um, where the water runs down and you'll see there'll be black lines Yeah. and people want to get like a heavy duty, they go to West Marine black streak remover. That's take that off the menu. <laughs> don't, don't even fall for that. Use uh, what I normally recommend. If you have to use a boat soap is a car wash and wax soap. They have car a, wash and wax soap. Okay. Yes. Don't use anything that says boat wash. Like boat wash is only for the decks and the bilge. So I would save your money. Go get a car wash and wax by Meguiar's, Turtle Wax, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Use what they say. Usually you get an ounce per, per gallon or whatever. Right. And a really soft bristle brush. Um, you have a, uh, a soft yellow. And this is, you know, a sure hold deck brush, but it's the soft one. You'll see it has a little fuzz. But I prefer to use the blue one. I don't have the blue one with me to show you. But this one is okay if you have to do a light but you don't want to scrub really hard. Okay. And if you get an area where it's beating off or not beating off with the wax and you're still getting black streaks, you can touch up with some wax on that area. And we can go over that a little bit yeah, later. Perfect. Um, I just want to remind everyone that uh, we are seeing your questions that are coming in and uh, we will get to them. Uh, we're going to just talk with Tom here for a little bit and then uh, answer all the questions at the end. Um, so uh, we talked about the, uh, the, the car soap and wax yes. and uh, the brush mm -hmm. and the chamois. Mm -hmm. um, are there any other products that you use in between polishes? Now the Nordhaven uh, stainless steel um, tends to have a little less nickel. It's not theirs. It's just what's made over in China and it does take a little more maintenance. Uh, I find that I found a really nice polish that is very fast and with a pad that I use, you know, it, it has cut the time before we used to have the, uh, what were the stainless steel davits, the large ones that used to oh, come the, the name? The Airtex davits. So the Airtex, yeah. and that would take me probably like two and a half hours to polish one out. Oh, wow. With this, what I use here, yeah. I'm pretty much done in about 35 minutes on a whole one. Okay, that's a big time difference. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, you know, it doesn't leave the streaky marks and everything like that. So it, it is a good product. So, I mean, I can show you yeah, that now. Yeah, sure, yeah. All right. This is a white scotch right pad. If you want the Scotch Bright number, the 3M number is 07445. It comes in a box of like 20, uh, but you can get probably individuals. What I do is I take a pair of scissors and I cut this into third. It's a third. So basically you'll have, 
if it's in thirds, just the same, just the right perfect amount for your hand to go over the stainless steel, all of the, you know, the metal work outside. This is a metal polish, which I really like. Uh, it comes from a car auto dealership here. Uh, there's a phone number on here, 561-844-6785 by Bright Products. This is lightning metal polish. Now, the, the key to use that in combination with this pad is shake it up so the blue goes away and then it all turns into white. You'd saturate the pad. Go ahead and do, you could do the whole bow rails, all of the, you know, the three stages or two stages, whatever you have on your Nordhaven completely. You'll feel this will take the rust. It does not scratch the stainless steel. So people are like, oh, that's going to scour yeah. and it's going to scratch. It does not scratch at all. You can rub it as hard as you want. Now, this will make light work of all the rust spots. Mm -hmm. And you can go in and just rub it and you'll feel it. It'll, it'll smooth out as you go. You do the whole bow rail, or whatever section you want to do. With this material, you have to let it dry. So you let it dry for, I don't know, usually I just, I'll just do the whole bow rail system, you know, say 20 minutes or 15 minutes, and then come back. You can use two white terry towels, or if you want to use a uh, microfiber. I don't really waste the microfibers on metal because they turn black. I use them for other purposes, but I take two towels and just wipe with one, and then it turns actually this what the neat thing about this product it turns into a dust okay so it dries there's no like liquid or yeah. oil or anything and it once it wipes off like a dust it's super bright and super shiny mm -hmm. so i take two towels one to pull off the original and then one to catch the residual dust and this the combination between this and the scotch bright pad this will make light work of your metal and uh if any kind of secret I could give away, that that's probably like a really huge secret that took me a long time to figure <laughs> out. And I don't mind sharing with you guys because it with Nordhaven, there's so much stainless steel. And when you get that stainless steel dialed in, it totally changes the look of the boat. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it, it really brings it out. So if I could recommend you guys to do anything to put in your, your box would be this, this combination right here. And, uh, you know, that... That will save you so much time. Yeah. So the the name of this cleaner is uh, Bright Products. That's the company's name. The company name, and it's Lightning Metal Polish, high gloss, hand or machine. And uh, this looks like it comes in uh, uh, one quart increments. They have the smaller bottle, like a, a, a pint, but I would recommend buying the quart. The key, you got to shake it because it does separate. That blue liquid separates from the uh, white. But it's our form, and otherwise you can wipe it. Otherwise, but it it's a lot easier. And then what I'll do is I'll wipe the whole thing, and then sometimes you'll miss a spot because of the way you turn, or yeah. And then you just go back and you know kind of look underneath and see what you missed, and then you can just do little spot corrections, and then mm -hmm. it's done. But I can tell you, it's a great product for an Orhoff, and and it does save you a lot of time. That's well, perfect. We really appreciate you sharing your. Uh, your secrets with us. Um, so we, we talked about uh, a little bit about gel coat and stainless. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on uh, teak treatments? Okay, uh, if you have uh, have to use a, a teak acid, you know you can use the two two part. Yeah, but I dilute it. Uh, I mean, way down, and I'll start off to see how watery a solution I could make it to where it works. Because people want to put it just straight on there. It's, it's not, you're going to damage your teak right. and you're going to pull out all the soft fibers and then you're going to, it's just going to be high grain and then you're going to end up having to sand it and you're losing it. Yeah. I noticed that you just did uh, the teak steps on mm -hmm. uh, 59 that left yesterday mm -hmm. and you know, they were starting to turn gray and uh, you know, they're, they look like they're brand new again mm -hmm. and you don't feel any of those fibers on it. Yeah, exactly. And the key is um, a lot of people want to use like a heavy deck brush or the little brushes that come in the package if you bought the, the quartz. Okay. Uh, stay away from anything like this because they're going to get in between, like say if this is the teak, they're going to get in between the soft parts. And then when you're left, you're left with the, all the high grain. Do you get a doodle pad if on a pole, I don't have it with me, but they do make a doodle pad. If you have a huge deck 
with a, okay. an applicator and a, on your deck your deck poles, and then right. you can you definitely want to use something like this. Um, I'll use actually one of these uh, if I am just doing like steps or something. And you always go, you know, against the grain. Don't go into the grain, but go against the grain and then clean it up. But it should be something really soft and gentle, uh, you know, because everyone wants to pour that straight acid yeah, no. and dig it in. And then that acid penetrates and it's just eating. Um, say for a gallon, if I had to do a gallon, I probably used uh, a tenth, uh, you know, a you know, one part to 10, you know, okay, one uh, part of the uh, mm -hmm. two parts to the, uh, and I would actually try it less and see what works for you. Cause some boats don't have a lot of, uh, mold or dirt, you know, yeah. you just need a light superficial cleaning, try a little less. And if you need a little more product, add a little more acid, stir it up and then see where that goes. Okay. And then the key is on the second part on the brightening is to give it about 15 minutes. And if it's drying out, have a, a hose that mists and just kind of lightly mist the teak. Okay. And then that, that 15 minutes is about good because that acid will brighten and it takes 15 minutes probably. Yeah. You, know, you don't want to just put it on and, and wash it off. Yeah. Give it some time. So leave it. So keep it wet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Um, and uh, let's see, what kind of uh, you on the Nordhaven 63 here that you just detailed for mm -hmm. us, you put some kind of product on the, uh, the canvas awning. Um, what was that? I mean, that really brought that back to life. I mean, it looks like, you know, it took it from faded to looking like it was brand mm -hmm. new. Yeah, they have the Aerospace 303, the vinyl treatment. They have a cleaner and a, and a treatment. Okay. And I should have brought that bottle in with me. I'm sorry. Oh, it's but all right. The Aerospace, the, just say, just go 303. That's basically the, the product line's name. Mm -hmm. And then look, they have different ones. And then it's the, uh, like the vinyl treatment. Vinyl treatment, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that really made a difference. Yeah, it, it actually restored up underneath. And then yeah. that waterproofs too. So say like where that canvas is mm. inverted and people rinse and they don't have time to chamois or shake the water spots. Without a treatment, it'll leave all those hard water. Oh, yeah. That's what was on there. Yeah. And now it just wipes off. You know, if you have that, you go back with a towel later, right. a damp towel and wipe it off. And that works out pretty well. And... uh you know, another question you've, you've mentioned numerous times that, uh, that you're extremely happy with the, the gel coat that mm -hmm. we're using on yes. the Nordhavens. Uh, can, can you expand upon that? Okay. Uh, it, it is a, a softer material than the past material that you use. Mm -hmm. So for a detailer's use, it's a lot easier to pull out scratches and it's a lot easier to work. So I don't have to use such harsh, cutting compounds when it's gone, you know, out where someone hasn't taken care of the polishing right. it's flat, you know, so you can use a lot less material and it has this like really deep shine to it rather than just like a superficial. Shine. Yeah. It used yeah. to be like a nice shine on superficial, a little bit in depth. You see a little bit, but now yeah. when you look at it, it's almost, it's more like a paint yeah. than a gel coat. I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Um, right now I'm working on the 6834, which just came in. Right. And, you know, it's been on the freighter, you know, been in the yard. I mean, just, just beaten up before it gets here. And I mean, I just hit it lightly and through the different stages. And I mean, it's, it's reflecting boats on the next dock over, you know, I can see my friend working on the boat today. He's like, you know, I looked over, I see him working. So, and it's a lot easier to keep up with. Um, I think it holds a polish a lot longer. Mm -hmm. And then for someone who doesn't, have experience using machines like you know like like i do but they can go back and use hand products different waxes yeah. and stuff and maintain In small it. areas mm -hmm. yeah and, and it's a beautiful color and, and a really nice product i'm glad you guys changed to it oh, that's, that's <laughs> it cool. makes my job a lot easier it's good to hear the boat looks a lot yeah. the boats look <laughs> awesome so um uh i've got a couple questions here um about the same thing but uh you know where do you get the uh, the tea cleaner and the two part tea cleaner? What is it called? Okay, they have different ones, but I prefer a snappy teak. Snappy teak. Mm -hmm. Okay, but any of them work. I mean, they're basically the the. It's just the the acid. Yeah. Whatever the formula is, they've all copied it. So I mean. Yeah, and and that is a, a West Marine product. Yeah, or, West Marine or okay. any boat store will have that. Um, but the key is dilute it, dilute it, dilute it, dilute it. Yeah. I mean, don't use it full strength. If they tell you to, don't, don't just. Right. Just try a little corner, you know, that is in the middle of somewhere, but that is kind of beat up. Right. And just do a little, you know, 
two by two section and see how that comes out. And if you need to add a little more to, to get it come out and then, you know, you kind of have your combination of what your boat needs. And you have to give it that, that 15 minutes or so. Before yeah. It with the to... original, the original, the first part, like part A or step one, whichever uh -huh. they call it, that's going to turn everything red. And that, what that does is that peels off all the dead fibers on the top. So oh, okay. when you're scrubbing, that makes a huge mess. Now the key to that is wet everything around the area say if it's in an area where it's going to slide down the hull wet the hull so wherever the runoff is going to go you need to saturate that with water prior to starting with the acid okay then once you're going don't get crazy and scrubbing because you're going to it's going to splatter this acid everywhere and you don't want that and the, you also need to get some rubber boots on or don't use barefoot uh, or sandals or anything because it is an acid and you need to wear gloves because if you have any kind of small nick it tends to eat Oof. the flesh out and you'll that hole in your hand will become uh, probably four times bigger but you want to keep some gloves and just real easy and do a section and then keep keep everything moist as you're working and then if it's, it's really a hot day i like to do all the teak work if i can if there's like a, a cloudy day or yeah. maybe like a, a misty rainy day or something like that where there's actual little bit of water always keeping on it, or I'll do it late in the afternoon or real early in the morning, you know, in the time, but not, not during the high sun or during the day. Sounds like a, a lot of work. Maybe they should, <laughs> maybe they should just call you. <laughs> um, all right. Well, there, is there anything else uh, you want to uh, bring up before we uh, open our lines for questions? Sure. Um, if you rain next your windows, um, I do a lot of ceramic coatings, so we do have ceramic coatings that we put on glass and on, I do ceramic coat a lot of the stainless, which is really a good product, uh, but you really need to make sure you have a really good ceramic product that someone can apply for you. I have a captain on a 68 who's has almost four years of not having to polish his stainless at all because of the ceramic application. Oh, wow. And right now we're up to do a, a new touch up. That, yeah. Um, and they also make it for the glass. But if you're not, you know, wanting to do that, you use the metal polish like like we have for your stainless, and then you would rain next your glass. Like, and then yeah. this is a product once you're rain next, um, which is a real quickie uh, cleaner on the glass. So if you have a little bit of salt residue, a little bit of dirt, um, the rain next touch up is a two in one. So I'll take two towels, basically. Um, the white terry cloth and clean this off and get it to where it's almost there may be a little haze and then I take the microfiber and then uh, use that to finish it off but this is a really good product here uh, for a quickie window you know like after you did a wash yeah. and you want to get a few water spots it, and it does provide um, you know, be you know the protection, the beads up and everything. And so that you use uh, in, lieu, in lieu of Windex. Uh, yeah, you don't want to use Windex after so. you done after you applied Rainex. Yeah. you don't apply Windex. No, you yeah, don't. You, use, you use this. Okay. So this has a little bit of that, and it cleans, and it's really like a quick cleaner. Okay, and it doesn't leave a lot of residue behind. So that's a nice one to use. Uh, these microfibers are really good on the interior, so uh, you can use these on your uh, any of your screens on. Uh, you know, all the, the instruments, monitors, yeah. any of your glass. This is really nice to pick up on the interior where you just can't, Windex will get the, but you can't remove all that little bit of salt. Yeah. Sometimes I'll wet one of these, dampen it, mm -hmm. and then, you know, a little bit of damp and then come back with a dry one. And these really save a lot of time on a boat. So I'd recommend investing, you know, Costco or wherever. Right. I'll get them from Costco, a big pack of them. Yeah, you know, that's so. a good idea. And then uh, this is what I would recommend uh, any kind of, uh, wax for your uh, maintenance. I like the Scotchgard 3M because it has a UV protection and it's really easy to use for say, uh, you know, an owner of the boat or someone to maintain. Mm -hmm. And then I use a Terry covered sponge and this is a staining sponge. So you'll just get in uh, a bead of it and get it saturated. And if you have like the black streaks that you just can't remove, don't use black streak remover. For, don't buy that. <laughs> just get you some wax. You know and work that because what happens is the wax has been you know depleted in that area so then now when you come back to wash you can use a chamois and it should come right off so this is really good mcguire's makes a flagship in the black bottle but i like that one it's very user friendly and it has a uh, uv uh, protection included in it and it is a 3m product so um, 3m products they spend a lot of money on their research and 
I'm very happy with a lot of their products. That's so. good. And, uh, you know, before we move on to any questions, uh, I got a message here from uh, Dan Streets. I'm sure all of you uh, know him very well. But, uh, you know, our, our teak decks are secured with epoxy. There's no, uh, there's no fasteners in those. Um, and they're actually really, really thick compared to, uh, to other boat brands. So, you know, if for some reason you did have, have to sand your teak decks, if they were too far gone, you know, there's plenty of space there to sand those down and you're not going to hit any fastener heads. And then once they're sanded down, then, of course, you can continue the treatments. Correct. Like uh, Tom just talked about. So um, I see we've got a, a buildup of questions here. So um, why don't we kind of start here uh, at the top? Um, uh, one of the questions is about ceramic coatings. Okay. And I know that you said that you do those quite often. So why don't yes. you kind of explain that process? Okay. Um, you know, ceramic is a word that's thrown out right now. And they've actually, a lot of people have overused it and they're not, using a proper product. Mm -hmm. So actually I think that it's getting a bad name now because you have guys that says, Hey, let me go, you know, ceramic coat your boat, you know, and it's $15,000 and right. then and they're not using a good product or they don't know how to use it. There's a lot of prep work. Okay. And, and then you spend all this money and you're not happy. And then all of a sudden it gets a bad name. And, um, you know, the ceramic coatings that I've seen, they really, I wouldn't use them on gel coats. They're not, I don't think they're, they've gotten to a point where they're proficient on gel coat. On painted surfaces, they're great. The problem is gel coat is so porous that mm -hmm. it will go in. And I just, every, every part, everything I've used on them, they just hasn't, you know, it, I don't think it lasts as long as, and for the expense, the cost right. versus the time, yeah, it outweighs it, yeah. you can have another coat of wax put on a lot quicker without all the prep work and continue waxing. It's really good on stainless steel. On, on all the handrails and, and all of that, I, I give it, you know, an A++, you know, on the and I would steel, definitely okay. recommend that, you know, the, to have something like that if you're not into maintaining or you don't have the time to maintain. Because the captain that had the four years, he goes, you know, I have so much other time now to devote to stuff like, you know, the engine or whatever I have to get ready for when the boss comes into town instead of having going, well, I got to go spend a whole day and a half polishing stainless, right. you know, so that's a good point. And then also when you're out to sea, you know, you don't have the option of, you know, rinsing it every hour, you know, it's getting blasted with salt. And so it, it makes a, a barrier that if you were out for two months or whatever, who cares? Right. You know, let the salt crystals build up on it. It's, it's protected, yeah. you know, it has a, a basically an armor over it. Okay, good. So, I, I would recommend it for those applications. And then they do make a ceramic for glass. And I would recommend that for your windows too, especially like on the hull, okay. you know, the big long windows. The port lights, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and those, uh, we had a, another 68 that was here. And in the three months that after it was commissioned and then it was here for three months and the going on sea trials and rinsing, it was starting to get water spots and they're big long windows that are in the master state room. Right. So I told the owner, I said, hey, you look out if you're wherever you are in this beautiful location and you can't see, you know, the morning <laughs> sunrise, you know, because you're all yeah. spotted out. Like, let's put a coating on there. And we got to seal up and coated and water spot eliminated. Yeah. You know, the problem is done. So, yeah, so basically ceramic coating mm -hmm. uh, with the, the proper preparations. Correct. And uh, on stainless and on uh, glass windows. For, yeah. And or if you have a painted hull or, or painted a painted hull. boat, you know, the larger boats are painted. Right. I'd recommend on, you know, surfaces like brows that are hard to reach for okay. polishing because those areas are very uh, dangerous to get up to f and get on to and stay on with. And I usually I'm up there or my guys are up there with a climbing harness, mm. you know, so you most people are <laughs> not going to go out yeah. on there with the yeah. climbing harness. So if you can get it treated and then it's sealed up, then, you know, that eliminates that and, and, maintenance on that. Uh, Another question just came in. I mean, once you use ceramic on stainless, mm -hmm. uh, are you committed to it? Do you have to strip it later if you want to go back to just polishing? Well, stainless, uh, the stainless on the Nordhavens is, uh, it's the good thing is it's porous. So mm -hmm. it, it actually absorbs into it. So you could strip the outside layer. It doesn't matter, you know, but it's inside and that's what prolongs the polishing. So really, 
ceramics can be top coated. Okay. So, you know, most guys are giving a year. If you hear a year, I don't really think it's uh, a really good product. You know, that it depends, you know, everyone throws that ceramic around and, right, yeah. you know, but you know, a two year guarantee is, is, is about what most people will do because it also depends on the, the owner's proper maintenance of it. Cause I had an owner that I ceramic code and I said, okay, there's two rules, no metal polish and no acid. Yeah. So he went off up north for the season and came back and he goes, Hey Tom, I got this great, you know, product that I'm using because I'm getting a little acid or a little a rust stain that's coming out of the stanchions and I'm using this on and off. And I'm like, which is a, a pretty harsh acid to remove salt and you know, for cleaning the hulls and stuff. Yeah. It can be used, but he did, I told him he needed to tape up the stance at the bottom of the stanchion to protect the coating. So in that time he's showing me this and then he goes, proceeds to the, to the swim platform and the handrails back there. He's going, and I found this great metal polish in the end. It's like, oh my God, you just, oh, yeah. you totally. So you, you prolong the, the material, the ceramic coating depends on how you take care of it. And most times it's just soap and water to take off the salt. And if you want to put a coat of wax on it, because you want to do something, you can, but you don't have to. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Um, Another question that came in earlier, uh, after an offshore trip, uh, how quickly do I need to wash the salt spray off and what are the likely problems if you don't do it quickly? Okay. Um, you know, the, the salt will tend to, um, eat a wax if it sits on for a long time. So, I mean, if you, I mean, you're exhausted, I know these trips are long and you just want to not even see the boat for three days. I mean, something like that is yeah. fine, but leaving it for a couple of weeks, it's a problem because it does, um, you know, go into the stain, you know, uh, all the lights, the sconces, it'll go up underneath, you know, yeah. and you know, you've got to get all the headliners, you know, rinsed off and uh, you know, all of that eventually, but so a couple days, but yeah, no, don't leave it for weeks. Yeah. Don't yeah. leave it for weeks. So okay. if you have need a four or five day break off the boat because yeah. the people are driving you crazy, the boat's <laughs> just, you're tired. It was a long bumpy trip. Right. Yeah. You'll be okay. Um, let's see what else do we have. Okay. So I don't know if you remember, if you remember the old, uh, the Nordhaven forties, the, yes. the first edition, and they had that, that black rub rail yes. that, that went around it. Um, what kind of products could you use on that, that black rub rail? Okay. Well, it depends what's on the rub rail. Like say if you hit a, uh, uh the, on the piling, they have the, the rubber bumpers. Yeah. So you'll get a big, long white streak down. You can take a little bit of acetone on a rag and roll the rag because it will pick up the rag, but you don't want to re-wipe when you pull that rubber off because you'll actually put it back on. So okay. you just kind of like slightly just put clean that up. And that usually goes with like a vinyl cleaner like that Aerospace 303. That would be you can get a cleaner for that and then um, and then wipe it up. And it depends on how old the, the material is. Um, a lot of times you can put just a coat of wax on it, you know, just depends, but I would test it because if the material is old, it will hold the wax and it'll make a white spot. But okay. I usually use anything clear, you know, you'll be fine to seal it and just keep, it might take a couple of coats, you know, to, yeah. to seal it up, but okay. you know, just, just check the material and you'll see it and it'll be good. All right. You got a, a thumbs up and a smiley face for that one. <laughs> All right, you're welcome. So <laughs> um, you Special care for procedures for glass. We, we talked about the, uh, the rain X and, mm -hmm. uh, the, the uh... yeah, sometimes with glass, you might have to call a professional in, like say a detailer like myself, because it depends on who took care of the boat and prior or how it's been taken care of. The glass will absorb mineral spots and it will make a, a, a like, you know, spots that you can't remove acid won't remove it. Mm. So there is a glass polish, but you need a professional that knows how to use the material because the polish has a type of acid that's in there and they'll have to tape off all your gaskets and then use a machine. And then that's when I would, you know, call in someone that knows how to do a slice ceramic coating on a glass because they'll know how to prep the glass. So right. if your window is really beaded and you can't get that, those water spots off, if, if the guy knows what he's doing and then you could trust him to do the ceramic right. coating on the glass. He'll get, remove all of those, those spots, polish them out and then seal it up. Then you won't have that problem. Yet. Okay. Perfect. Um, now I, I'm not sure. I mean, uh, do you do anything on the interiors? Yeah, sure. Okay. 
So this question came in, says, what about interiors? When uh, people come in and uh, they leave wet marks on the wood mm -hmm. or on the carpets, uh, you know, wine stains, food stains, you know, we use a lot of ultra leather, uh, you know, a lot of carpet, uh, you know, what can you, what can you suggest on those areas? Okay, I, I don't have the bottle with me, but you go into any grocery store or, or hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, uh, it's Murphy's Oil Soap. It comes in, um, you know, just a, a type of bottle like this. It's clear, okay. you know. Now, the key to that is to, to get you a bucket that you use inside. Now, if you're going to use a bucket, your boat bucket, make sure and take some uh, two-inch blue tape and tape the bottom of the bucket because the edges are really rough from dragging it on the dock and on the non-skid. Oh, and yeah. you put that on your deck, you're going to scratch your floor. So while the bucket's dry, I usually take the two inch tape, go around three times and then, you know, fold it down. Oh, and now you have a nice installation for your bucket. You want to get the hottest water you have. So in a five gallon bucket, like say the interiors to do all of the, the wood and like the uh, leather couches or, uh -huh. you know, something like that, that won't absorb water. I'll do a uh, half a bucket. So two and a half gallons or two gallons of hot water, as hot as it'll come out of the tap. Mixed accordingly to whatever the Murphy's Oil shows. Stir it up really well. And I'll get two towels. Um, basically, I'll have a, a dry towel and a wet towel. So you dip in the wet towel. And now you can do, with that two and a half gallons, probably, I'd say, three staterooms and a salon. Oh, wow. So the water will turn dirty, mm -hmm. but it still cleans. That's the cool thing. Once the water's hot and you're using that Murphy's Oil soap, this is not a trick I'm telling you guys. It took me a long time to learn. So giving you the detailed little <laughs> trick here. So go in and this takes off all the salt, all the grime, all the uh, suntan finger lotion, Ooh, fingerprints yeah, in there, yeah. all that stuff off. Now, the key is wring it out to where it's just moist and then do a section, say, however you're comfortable with. You know, So for me, I would do probably like, a six foot from the, the whatever the ceiling is down by six foot. Wipe that up and make sure your air conditioning's running. You got to pull the humidity up. Don't have the you know unless it's a cool dry day and you have your doors open. But you need the the air condition to keep the humidity level okay. up. So otherwise, it's just going to stay wet on the wall. Right. Then go back with the, the second towel and then wipe it up. And then you'll see sometimes there'll be uh, streaks where it's half dried out. And then when I'm done with, like, say, a whole bulkhead, you know, uh, the microfiber towels, which you definitely need to get two packs of these on the boat. And you can wash these as long as they don't get really dirty. And then go back and then buff it out. And it has a high shine. And it actually protects, um, you know, for the fingerprints and stuff like that. And then now, once you've treated it with the Murphy's Oil Soap, mm -hmm. you probably have, like, two or three times of going back with just only the microfiber towel to pull up the salt or fingerprints. Right. So it, it protects it. And then it makes real quick work for, you know, like if you're yeah. going on a trip. So oh, that's good advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, another question is, uh, you know, there's a lot of rubber gasketing uh, around the outsides of the Nordhaven and all the locker doors and drawers. Mm -hmm. I mean, are there any products that they shouldn't, that uh, owners shouldn't be using that might dry these out or, um, it, I, mean, I haven't, haven't really found anything that, yeah. that will uh, prolong that. I think it's just the material does just over time. You know, right. it's, a, it's a rubber and it dry rots from the heat or, okay. you know, the humidity. Yeah, right. So it's not that expensive to replace, you know. I mean, you get, what, probably five or six years yeah. out of your gasket. So, uh, you know, and the, I would say, you know. Um, there's another question that came in. Uh, do you ever recommend wet, sand, wet sanding fiberglass uh, if it's been highly oxidated or wet sanding gel coat? You know, this is a way a lot of detailers... Uh, try to make a, an extra buck off of you for doing that. Um, I, I totally disagree with wet sanding unless there's been a repair or like a scratch, you know, say, um, you know, it's on a trip you had like a cooler yeah. that's rubbed and then you have a rub mark. Because the problem is you could have a patch that if you don't know the history of the boat, say on an older boat, mm -hmm. someone came and did a patch. Now the guys that are doing patches aren't laying out the gel coat like you guys do at the factory. Right. So, I've had this happen. This is where I've learned the hard way is, you know, you, you go and wet sand something and you see a little black mark. You're like, oh, I'm going to wet sand it more. And actually that's the primer. So you removed uh, more of the gel coat. Then now 
as a detailer, you're paying a guy to come back and repair yeah. a gel coat repair. So you don't need to with the materials. The older boats, definitely not. because You'll just have to have the guys do maybe two compounds, the cutting compounds if the boat is oxidized. Yeah. That's usually what I do. The Nordhavas need no more than two original cutting compounds. Then they can go through the polishing steps to restore it because you're removing the material for no reason. If it's that bad, like I said, you take two or three polishings to restore it because right. it's dried out. So basically you're just cutting dry material instead of impregnating it with wax and restoring right. it. Okay. It needs to be restored. And, you know, so basically you just want to cut the surface off. Yeah. And that with a Kai cutting compound, one cut or maybe two, and then person's just right into, you know, fresh material. Yeah, that so makes sense. Don't wet sand unless it, you really have to, or if there's a repair that the guys have to level out, but stay yeah. away from that. All right, everybody, we've got about less than 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to get through all the questions here. Um, what is your opinion on Orpine soap? <laughs> That's a great question. Orpine is only for the bilge. Now, um, I've been told the creation of Orpine comes from the owner of American Custom Yachts, Stewart. He has a die cutting factory, and the Orpine is the loop for cutting dyes, huh. but he liked the pine smell. And he said, wow, that'd probably cut the fishy smell because he has a fishing boat. Right, yeah. Let's make it a boat soap. If it's a soap, it is the worst. It is like toxic for your boat. Get all, right. all throw it out or only use it down in your bilges. If you want, like a, if you had a fish box or you want to freshen up down in the engine room, it, the reason why is it totally strips the wax. It, you know, painters will use Dawn after they're prepping a boat or yeah. whatever. Or they'll use Orpine. It will totally, uh, your expensive polish job will be ruined in, in probably three boat washes with that. All right. So, so no, no Orpine. No Orpine. <laughs> Got it. Um, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, the wash and wax soap, like we went over earlier, in case you just joined us, you know, any car wax, wax and wash soap, Meguiar's, Turtle Wax, any of that is what you want to use on, on the outside with a blue bristle or a soft, you know, the soft bristle yellow brush. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are your recommendations on cutting compounds? Um, it depends on the, the um, you know, the, the condition of the boat. Like I have a heavy cut material. I have another uh, material that I use that starts with a heavy cut and goes down to a lighter cut. It's a variable grade. Um, it just depends on where the boat is because you don't want to remove material or use something really harsh because cutting compounds, they scratch. Okay. So basically you're wet sanding and then you'll have to go through stages to remove that scratched, mm -hmm. you know, finish. If you can get away with a lighter one, you know, where you don't have that scratching, then you can skip stages. And right. a lot of the boats you, you can use like a medium cut compound, mm -hmm. you know, and if, and you definitely need to have experience, you know, using machine, the machine is very dangerous. It can uh, damage the boat easily. You can burn the gel coat if you don't have enough material. I'll I'll yanked out of that that one. <laughs> They're so, very dangerous. So I would, uh, you know, if you have a basic area you want to try, but you know, the, the reason is it'll hit a corner and it's, you know, high revolutions and, and it'll yeah. bounce back into your face, you know? And so if you need to use a machine, I would call a professional just it's it. And maybe they, you know, later on a little practice, you might get away with it, but it, right. it is not safe. Perfect. So once again, call Tom for that. <laughs> um, one question here is my detailer got wax on the edge of my bottom paint above the waterline. How can I get the white wax off the black paint? Okay. Well, the diver usually comes by and will, you know, scrub up depends on where your waterline is. I mean, some of the boats have eight inch waterline and some have one inch waterline. Uh, you can take a little Dawn and, um, if you have the soft scotch bright pad, you know, and then rub that bottom paint because it's going to come off. It's made to right. come off. So basically that's just on the surface. So, you know, just, you can just scrub it with a little bit of soap and it comes right off. Perfect. Um, uh, how do you reach the lower, lower portions of the hole to wax? 
do you need a stand in a dinghy to apply the wax to these areas or do you simply use an extension pole with a soft applicator or sponge mop attached to it? Yeah, you can use a tender. Uh, you're going to have to have your lines to where there's, you're snug up to the boat. So normally I have, uh, there's a suction, suction cup, cups, yeah. you know, handles that you can get a cheap pair is at Harbor Freight or you can get an expensive pair from West Marine. Um, you know, depends on how many times you're going to use it. Right. So normally I'll apply those if I'm using a raft or a tender and have the boat snug. And the key is you need to set up some spring lines because when you're polishing the boat's going to move to yeah, whatever you're putting pressure on it. So the boat's going to move. Exactly. So I, I'll, I'll set up a, a spring line, you know, on the tender or on the raft right. in addition to pulling it up close. And then you just, you know, you can do by hand. Yeah. Be careful using machines because you're putting your trust in a GFI that you don't know most of the GFIs on the docks. Yeah, you don't want to drop an electrical tool. Yeah, in you water. fall in with an electrical tool and yeah. you're pretty much toast. So, uh, and then, you know, you don't really get a good finish like in the water trying to use a machine because everything's moving. You know, you should really get the main work done when you're on the hard. Yeah. And then do the maintenance with the wax. Say every six months mm -hmm. have someone go by and, and put a coat of wax and keep the gelco from drying out. Mm -hmm. And that'll prolong like most people do a two year, you know, yard okay. yard stint. So well, perfect. Well, uh, I think that's about all the time we have for Tom. Uh, thank you for joining us, Tom. You're welcome. Thanks. Um, a lot of people are asking uh, for your location and uh, your company information. Would you like to give them that? Okay, I'm here um, in in Jupiter, Florida, and um, you can reach me at area code 561-635-2453. And my company's name is Tom Sawyer Yacht Services Incorporated. And if you can't reach me, um, you can probably touch base with someone here in the office. And, you know, I'll get back to you within a day, you know, whenever they give the message here um, at the Southeast office here, if you have questions or just send me a text or, um, you know, or ask me to, or give me a message. A lot of times I'm working during the day and I'm using machines and I, and I, unfortunately I need glasses to read text right now. So I don't usually, I'm not able to read my text till the end of the day, but I'll get back to you by the next day at the latest. And if you have any basic questions, I'm glad to help you out. Yeah, no and, problem. And Tom's been uh, great to us at Nordhaven. So if your boat's in this area, um, you know, I know he'll do uh, a good job on your boat too. So, uh, thanks, uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you here in another 10 minutes for our uh, uh, roundtable discussion.